This is the Creative Stage V2. It's a 2.1 soundbar and subwoofer combo pack. Essentially, it comes with something called clear dialogue and surround audio processing, which is what I'm really interested in. Essentially, what that means is you can get very clear dialogues and acoustic sounds for whatever you're watching on your TV without being drowned out by the powerful bass. Now, I'm going to connect this with my LG C10. If you haven't seen the review for this video, check out the link in the description. I'll leave there for you guys to watch. Let's go ahead before we test out the sound quality on this to see how that piece of audio technology works. Let's go and see what comes in the box and how you can connect it. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so inside the box, you get a quick start guide and some warranty information. You also have yourself the UK plug. You also have a EU and US plug adapter as well, in case you need to use that. There's a USB-C to USB-A cable to connect it for one source for audio. You also have the auxiliary cable for audio. Then you also have the remote control. So let's take a look at the remote control now. As you can see, it's pretty standard. You've got yourself the TV arc and USB button there at the top. You also have the optical and auxiliary button, then a Bluetooth button if you want to connect to that. It's also turning the surround and the dialogue modes on and off, which are the specialties for this soundbar. You can also change the bass and treble, minus and plus as well for each of these. So pretty standard options and it does take AAA batteries. Now let's take a look at the soundbar. Now the soundbar the design is actually quite simple, subtle and minimalist. It actually has two 20 watt speakers inside there, but this actually blends in very well with any type of TV that you may have. And it would also complement any type of interior design. So it's a very neutral design and it's quite slim and it looks quite nice there on a TV unit. And finally, you have yourself the subwoofer. You can see it's pretty slim, but it does pack 40 watts of bass in there. In combination of all of this, you can get a total of 160 watts of power. So I think that combination is great. So I'm going to connect this and showcase to you guys how it sounds, but let's go ahead and look at the different ways you can connect it. Right, so on the back of the soundbar, to the left-hand side, you have three inputs. You have USB-C, you also have the TV arc for HDMI, which unfortunately, this doesn't come with the HDMI cable, but it's very easy to source one. Then you can also connect it to auxiliary. So the auxiliary one, you can connect to multiple different things, your phone, another speaker, whatever output you'd like. To the right-hand side, you also have the optical input, which is probably the most recommended. And this is where you will connect the subwoofer. Opposite that is where you get the power cable to go into. Now on the right hand side of the soundbar, this is where you have the power button. If you wanted to turn it on manually, you have the volume controls. Then you also have the Bluetooth button there as well. So you can pair this via Bluetooth to multiple things, including your TV. So if you really wanted to stream the audio via Bluetooth, then you can do that. That is a possibility, but I always preferred the wired option just for lag free, clear audio. Right, so my soundbar is connected to the TV. I've got my subwoofer just next to the TV stand here. You can see it's quite conspicuous. It's almost the same height. You don't even know it's there and it's very easy and slim to hide it in view from the TV. If you are going to use a wall mounted TV, just remember that you are going to see some cables. So I want to showcase to you guys how to connect this via Bluetooth in addition to using a cable. So I've got it connected using HDMI TV arc. That allows me to control the volume of the soundbar using the TV remote instead of the soundbar remote. So it's very convenient as well. I'm going to showcase a Creative Stage V2 promotional video promoting this soundbar, but I'm gonna switch the audio starting off with the TV speakers and then changing them to the soundbar speakers. So try to hear it out, but just remember, the audio will be coming directly from my lavalier mic here. So what I hear might be different to what you guys hear, but try to see the difference in the volume levels, the gain, the bass, the treble, all of that kind of thing, and let me know what you guys think. So let's get straight to it.
Hopefully you guys heard the difference when I switched over to using the soundbar and the subwoofer. Now I just put the volume up a little bit because the bass is so powerful, it just made the audio coming from the videos a lot more punchy. Now the next thing I wanted to test is the surround and dialogue modes. Now this is the key selling point for this soundbar. What that does is you can increase the surround sound or the dialogue coming from the video yourself manually by adjusting it in the soundbar. It goes between minus five to plus five. That's also the same with the bass and treble that's on the remote control as well. So you can adjust everything accordingly. So if I wanted to turn down the dialogue, I can go all the way down to minus five and I'll hear more of the surround sound. Now this is great if you're watching movies where you don't have a lot of people speaking and you want more of the bass and the action coming through. But if you have a lot of people talking and there's things going on in the background that you'd like to hear a little bit more clearly, then you can put the dialogue up and have the surround sound maybe at a neutral number, maybe around zero plus one, and still get a great solid listening experience. Now let me just go ahead and play one of my previous YouTube videos. I'm going to adjust the surround and the dialogue, but I'm going to let you guys know which one I'm doing at the same time and see if you guys can hear the differences in each. Just starting off, the surround and the dialogue both are set to zero, so I can go minus and plus five for each. So let's start off with zero and see how that currently sounds. Guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. So today I'm pretty excited. This is the brand new lens from Tamron. It's the 28 to 200 millimeter f2.8, and it's the world's first all-in-one zoom lens at that maximum aperture of 2.8. So today I'm going to be showcasing a lot of sample photos and videos for you. Alright guys, so just to start off a little bit about the specs on this lens, I'm actually filming and recording this video right now that you can see from this Tamron lens itself. So I'll be showing you some B-roll footage of it that I shot a little bit ago to cover some of the main points. And it's very lightweight. Tamron have always been very good at building quality lenses that are not so heavy to take with you, especially if you're always on the move. This weighs only 575 grams and it's just so easy to take with you. And as you're probably aware, it's an RFD lens, which stands for Rapid Extra Silent Stepping Drive, which is a motor that provides super fast and super silent autofocus, especially when you're doing video recording then you're not going to hear any autofocus noise when you're filming and doing your shots. But anyway, now the build quality is pretty solid. It's not as solid as like my previous Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter lens that I have, which is very heavy and it's just metallic, it's aluminium and sometimes, you know, as I was mentioning, now it might have been a little bit hard to hear the differences if you're watching this maybe on your phone or without any headphones, but I've heard the difference when I'm playing it and I really like the possibilities of adjusting the dialogue compared to the surround sound, including the bass and the treble separately, just to get the perfect scenario for whatever video I'd like to watch. Now, the last thing I wanted to showcase to you guys is to use a Bluetooth adapter, also developed by Creative, so that you can wirelessly stream your audio to the soundbar itself. So let me go ahead and showcase that. So this is the Creative BT-W3. It's a USB-C Bluetooth adapter for wireless audio streaming. All you have to do is connect the adapter to the device you want to send the audio from, put it into pairing mode, and then select it with the source speaker, just like this soundbar. In the box, you get yourself the user guide. This is the adapter itself, which has a little button and an LED light. This is a USB-C to USB-A adapter, and I'll cover this analog microphone in a second. Now, there are four different audio codecs that you can select, which are highlighted by the little LED light on the front of the adapter. Three of them using Qualcomm's aptX codec to provide lag-free audio, as you can see here. The last one being SPC, which is pretty much used by every type of stereo Bluetooth headphones. If you use aptX codec, then your receiving audio device needs to also support aptX codec for this to work. And finally, you also get this analog mic. So if you want to pair with headphones for audio output, which already has an inbuilt mic, this allows you to select between two modes, HFP mode, which allows you to continue using your inbuilt mic or analog mode that uses aptX codex to use the mic on this adapter, but your headphones should also support aptX for this to work. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to connect this audio transmitter to the USB adapter. I'm going to put it into my USB port of my TV and then wirelessly stream the audio directly to this soundbar. As you can see, I've removed the HDMI art cable all I have is the subwoofer and the power cable connected to the soundbar. So let's go ahead and do wireless audio streaming. Okay, so I've just connected it to the back of my TV in the USB port. I press the button on there to go into pairing mode. 
which should be flashing blue LED on the front of the adapter. So now all I need to do is go into my TV settings and change the source to Bluetooth. Right, so sound out, there you go. It's come up with the Bluetooth option. I've selected stage V2 soundbar. So now that's selected, as you can see there, Bluetooth, HDMI arc is no longer selected. Now let's see how that sounds. Hopefully you guys saw that. From me personally viewing it via Bluetooth, I can see that it's a very good response rate. It's perfectly in sync. I didn't get any lag. And overall, the sound quality has enhanced my viewing experience with my new TV. I just wanted to give a shout out for Creative for sending me this combo pack of the soundbar subwoofer and the Bluetooth adapter. The soundbar itself, the Stage V2, comes in at just under 90 pounds and the Bluetooth adapter comes in just under 30 pounds. I've got all of the links for each of these down below if you guys wanna check it out. If you did like this review, make sure you go ahead and give this video a huge thumbs up. I got lots of really cool tech reviews coming out in the near future, which I know you're gonna like, especially around the audio space and really good home improvement tech. So make sure you go ahead, hit subscribe so you don't miss those videos and I will catch you guys next time. Take care.